Well, there you have it. No venue yet as of today, the end of May, um, May the 31st. Just a few days ago, Ryan Garcia was at the Tank Davis versus Roley Romero six round knockout of uh, Roley, talked his way into a pay per view. In this little short show we have here today, talking about the fight, we're going to talk about um, Ryan Garcia, what should be next after this fight, what will likely not happen next. But let's listen to some audio clips first. First, this was Ryan Garcia um, at Tank Davis versus um, Roley Romero. He had bet Earl Spence $20,000 that, by the way, here is the uh, knockout, if you want to see. There's the knockout. Oh, no. Here is Ryan Garcia earlier at the event. Pay attention to what he says, and then we're going to listen to Leonard Ellaby and talk about the fight, uh, Ryan Garcia versus Javier Fortuna. See, here's the thing. It's not really a bad fight. It's just that, you know, you got to stay in your lane. Now, I do admire what Ryan Garcia said at the end of his uh, last fight against uh, Emmanuel Tago that he wasn't going to be calling people out and he was going to, you know, leave everything up to his team. But then after, he went on to start calling fighters out again, and then this this last weekend. Here, let's listen in. Take your time out, by the way. Like the video, subscribe. I am T Street Controversy with uh, Fight View 360. <laughs> You hear him saying, you know, fuck Golden Boy, fuck Golden Boy, something along the lines of it's me and all of that stuff. Well, it doesn't really match the receipts. You see what I'm saying? Like his credibility is low. For example, listen to um, Leonard Ellaby right here um, at the Tank Davis versus Roly Romero press conference. By the way, fucking Roly thought he won. And um, let me know what you think. Take your time out. Please help us out. Like the video, subscribe down below in the description box is a link to the WBC app powered by the Vibe Network. We are moving to being um, not only just YouTubers, but podcasters here in Fight View 360 um, once a week, twice, depending on the um, nature of the show. We're going to be on Apple, uh, Spotify, Google, Spreaker, and, you know, work your way on down from there. And we're hoping that we'll be able to provide content for you in the podcast form that you're not getting in that realm. But anyway, listen in, take your time out. And also, um, I am going to be letting you guys know all that information once it's all done and released. But in the meantime, let's get back to uh, Ron Garcia versus Javier Fortuna, which was just announced today. No venue yet. Let's see. It's going to be on the zone. But let's listen to Leonard Ellaby. You, you got guys out there like managing them, trying to pump him up, and like like he's some killer. You know, Ryan Garcia. Like I said, he's he's a good fighter. Got number of respect for him, but he don't want none of that smoke. He don't want none of that smoke because if he did, he make Golden Boy do it. And I've tried on on two occasions that uh, some of the reporters uh, seem to forget when they when they say that. Oh, Tank Davis don't want to fight none of the top fighters. But then they, they say that Ryan Garcia is a top fighter. But, hey, but you, we know what it is. I have one, just one last question. Um, I didn't see they, they did the celebrity <laughs> row on the... Uh... So, you know, and, and, and I believe Leonard Ellaby. One thing I have to give Leonard Ellaby um, some respect for, even though I didn't like some of the things he said in this uh, post-fight press conference, is that, is that he holds court with media. You know, he's beefing with Eddie Hearn right now. He actually has a uh, interview on the Last Stand podcast with Brian Custer. I can't wait to listen to. You know, um, let me see if I can pull up one little clip for you guys. I haven't even heard it yet, but I want to peek in. I guarantee it's going to be some fucking funny ass shit. See, look, just look at the title. Leonard Ellaby calls Eddie Hearn the biggest fucking clown in boxing. One hour ago was uploaded. I came. Let me just see. 
as a loser, and the other fight, the other fighter is going to come out on top, and then we'll see what's ne next steps for, for that guy. You know, I'm uh, Eddie Hearn came out and said, I'm opening, open to signing Tank Davis, and I'll overpay for him just to get under Leonard Ellaby's skin. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's been no secret um, that my opinion of him, I think he's the biggest fucking clown in all of boxing. And I have a, a very, very good reason why I say that. You know, here it is a guy that has openly told the entire world that he was coming to America to take over boxing. Okay, let's leave that right there. He's coming to America to take over boxing. And he had a budget of well over a billion dollars. I repeat, a billion dollars. And what he has done, he has come over to the United States and didn't know the first thing about the marketplace at all. And excuse me for cursing again. No, no problem. And, and he's fucked off over a billion dollars. Shit. Well, yes, that is going to need a listen. I'm going to put the link down below in the uh, comments for you guys to check it out, because as soon as I finish doing this video, I'm going to go make some lunch and I'm going to check it out myself. But yeah, let's go to Ryan Garcia, man. Listen, he's all right, you know, but he, he, he he's kind of like he blows a lot of smoke. 22 and 0 with 18 KOs, right? The Manuel Tagu fight. Okay, the Ghana Pepper this dude was talking about, but dude didn't really come to fight. Okay, cool. Ryan Garcia pitches a shutout. The Luke Campbell fight was really supposed to be like his real, like passion of the torch. Like, okay, the new blood is here. But look when that was. The pandemic, like there, there were in arena fights at that time after Luke Campbell. He fucked off a whole 13 months for mental health, whatever the case may be. Okay, I understand. But you got to come back and be a little humble. I mean, he seems like a cool, nice guy, you know, kind of an internet troll, you know, all the little girls and everything love him. You know, he got all the Instagram followers, you know, God knows how many. But if you look on Twitter, you know, disrespect to him, but he ain't shit. He be getting fucking murked and slaughtered on social media because people want to see him fight people and not talk shit. Now, however, let's pay homage what homage is due. This is a very good fight for him. Arguably one of the best fights on his resume, the best fight on his resume, depending on how you rate Lou Campbell. Fortuna is a highly skilled fighter. By the way, I covered his last fight. He fought on a card with um, Jason Rosario down in the Dominican Republic, and they pretty much had like a party in the ring. No bullshit. Watch this. I'll show you just a little bit of a clip. Once again, let me know how you guys are doing and your thoughts on this uh, fight. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe if you haven't. We will be here this weekend for uh, Cambosos versus Haney um, live streaming commentary during the main event only. My colleague, that's undisputed, of course, for 135. I'm going to get into that a little in a little bit. But my colleague, Big J, is going to be in Australia. Thank you to uh, um, main event pay-per-view. Thank you to Ben Damon. Thank you to Noonan Boy, uh, boxing along with um, um, promotions, along with Fight Hype and um, Duco Events. So, yeah, we're going to be um, uh, covering that card real time like in like in the arena also we're going to be at Arthur Berta Bia versus Joe Smith 2 in New York so we're we're, we're getting the, the wheels rolling so when you you know come to my channel I want you guys to know that like we're not just here you know as people like to say sitting in your mom's basement you know how motherfuckers can get you know just talking shit about boxing no you know even though you know interviews is not my strong point I've always been told I can do good interviews and that I do good interviews but honestly I don't like talking to boxers or people in the business. You know, I, I just don't enjoy it. But for the podcast, we will be doing that. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, we just don't get up here and talk shit and chat shit without resources. Or as they say, quote unquote, and I hate using the term. You rarely ever hear me use the term sources. But, you know, we take pride in what we do. So anyway, um, let's go look at this clip of uh, Javier Fortuna, his team partying in the ring after his last fight. Man. This was uh, Fortuna's last fight right here down in the Dominican Republic. This was last February? This February. And then he started partying. Like, he started, like, partying in the ring. They dimmed the lights and everything. Yeah. 
But, you know, now, you know, he's fighting Ryan Garcia. And let's go look at his resume. You know, he's 33 years old. Um, 37, 3 and 1, 26 KOs. Rafael Hernandez, obviously, that was his first fight back after losing to uh, Jojo Diaz back in um, July of last year. Um, notable, fi notable fights, um, Adrian Granados. I remember that. That's when he, uh, like, fell on his shoulder, right? Something like that. And people thought he was, like, selling it, that he really didn't want to fight. Lost a split decision to um, Robert Easter. Um, this was a big win for him. It went over Omar Douglas. I ain't seen him since. I was at this fight, by the way. I believe this was Danny Garcia versus uh, um, Samuel Vargas, Jason Sosa, Brian Vasquez. You know, nice, solid, quality, you know, Patrick Hyland, quality wins. But, you know, you can look at his resume and said, okay, well, he lost to Jojo Diaz. He lost to um, um, Robert Easter and Jason Sosa. You can think like, well, you know, Ryan Garcia just going to wash him. I don't know, bro. I don't know. But Ryan Garcia should win, supposed to win. But to be honest, you know, I I, I, I get that Ryan Garcia is going to be active. Okay, boom. You know, he fought um, a couple of months ago, April. Okay, it hasn't even been two months yet. Now he's fighting again in July. And now he's able to get a third fight this year. But who is it going to be? Because it ain't going to be Tank Davis. One thing that um, Steven Espinosa recently said on... Um, how do you pronounce this dude's name? You know what? Let me let me give him a shout. Hold on. I'm gonna pull up this clip for you that Steven Espinosa had with um Dan um Canabio with a uh, CompuBox. Nice solid po podcast he's got going on there. And also he has a YouTube channel and gets uh, quality interviews. But anyway, I'm gonna play this little short clip for you, and hopefully he don't get pissed off because I never play anyone shit. You know, unless it's like kind of relevant. But I want you to listen to what um, Steven Espinosa had to say about this fight. Or or how, you know, or if they can make Ryan Garcia versus Tank Davis too. Tank Davis, excuse me. I'm thinking about Eastside Cruz, Tank Davis too. But anyway, listen in. Take your time out. Like the video. Subscribe. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at T Street Controversy. Here it is right here. Listen in. To me, I, I think it's the biggest fight of all of them is, is Ryan Garcia. Yes, 100%. I was a little disappointed selfishly. I saw that Golden Boy signed a new deal with DAZN. I mm -hmm. think that complicates the situation. Kated. Is it, though, with the fact that DAZN has pay-per-view? Well, you know, it, there, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of complications with that. You know, they're not just any pay-per-view distributor. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a little bit like... Um, you know, the, the HBO situation. Um, but this is not Mayweather Pacquiao, you know. And so I don't know that the fight is big enough to have two networks into it. Right. No, it certainly doesn't need to it. And being completely candid, you know, uh, what are they bringing to the table, you know, uh, other than Ryan? They're, they're, you know, we knew when we worked with UFC on McGregor, we knew they were talking to their fan base. Right. And we were talking to ours. I guess it would just be making the fight. Yeah. And, you know, he has a point there, you know, like, who's the zone? What do they bring to the table? Like, you know, um, to further elaborate, you know, um, not to put words in his mouth, but, yeah, the UFC has a big fan base. You know, the zone doesn't have that type of recognition, you know, to be doing a joint pay-per-view. Ryan Garcia, or excuse me, Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia is not that big of a fight. It's not the type of fight where you can, you know, have two networks working together. For example, it's going to have to be on pay-per-view. How many buys does Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia do? Honestly, okay, yeah, you know, I'm going to say 600,000. I don't think this I don't think that Tank Davis Ryan Garcia does better than, you know, what I would I predict or what many could predict that, you know, um uh Spence versus Crawford would do. You know, if we would do like three pay-per-views, right? Um Canelo Golovkin 3, Spence Crawford and Ryan Garcia for tune, I think it would be, I mean, Ryan Garcia versus, um, excuse me, Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia. I'm not quite sure that this fight does 800,000 pay-per-view buys. Like, Ryan Garcia, like, listen, the, his fan base, his core audience, his core fans, they're TikTokers and shit. They're the social media generation. These motherfuckers ain't paying for nothing. Them stream links are going to be flying like crazy. Tank Davis has a more grown-up, 
um, um, audience, in my opinion, more mature audience than Ryan Garcia. Just my opinion. So who does he fight next? I'm looking at the rankings here at 135 pounds, you know, I mean, and it's got to be, him and Tank needs something significant, but we're going to focus on Ryan Garcia. And remember, uh, Cambosos and Haney, they're tied up for the year. They got a two-fight deal. So that's, you know, Tank Davis or Ryan Garcia are not getting either of them. You know, I mean, unless they can do something where they do Ryan Garcia versus Lomachenko when he comes back from war, but we don't know when the hell that's going to be. Now, we're talking about realistic fights. Remember, the WBC ordered Ryan Garcia to take on Isai Cruz, but we knew that wasn't going to happen. Just because a sanctioned body orders a fight doesn't mean that it's going to happen. Isai Cruz, don't be surprised if you see him against Tank Davis again. You know, now that he was on pay-per-view, they're going to try to keep Isai Cruz pay-per-view, and I'm not a fan of his handler, Sean Gibbons. You know, don't be surprised if it's Zagir um, Abadulia for WBC Eliminator. Because he beat Jorge Linares in an upset several months back to be the WBC mandatory, I believe, or was it just an eliminator? But don't be surprised if it's him. You know, Jojo Diaz, you know, Golden Boy, they will build that up. Oh, he, you know, I, I can smell it now that I think about it. It's going to be Ryan Garcia. If he beats Javier Fortuna, it's going to be Ryan Garcia versus Jojo Diaz. I smell it. I can smell it. I smell it. So I'm guessing this fight's going to take place in L.A. somewhere. California, maybe. Um, Don't expect for the undercard to be. I don't know. They might stack the undercard up. Golden Boy is not really too bad with putting on bullshit undercards for their uh, flagship fights. And this is considered a flagship fight. But I don't know, man. We'll see. I'm not too thrilled about this fight. And from my understanding, fans kind of like it. But it's kind of, you know, like like lukewarm regarding the appeal. Anyway, take your time out, like the video, subscribe, and teach through controversy with Fight View 360.